Mike Santoli is here on set to talk about the picture for global growth and to what degree markets yeah. are discounting that. Yeah, the markets have been implicitly, collectively saying we have a bottom in global growth, probably in the third quarter. Uh, the Nikkei is an interesting case, obviously a laggard for a very long time. It's still at this new high for this cycle, 35% uh, below its 1989 record. Uh, but if you look at the rest of the world's stock indexes versus the S&P 500, there's actually an ETF for that. As we know, ACWX is everything around the world except for uh, the U.S. stocks. This is since... Uh, Mid-August, and mid-August is basically when that, that switch flipped, when basically said it's going to be a global uh, recovery right here, and you see that they're basically neck and neck from that period, even though on a year-to-date basis the S&P 500 is still the outperformer. So now the question is, going into next year, those stocks over there are cheaper, they're more cyclical, they're more financial in most parts of the world than they are in the U.S., so it's also kind of implicitly a value and cyclical trade to decide to, to invest elsewhere as opposed to sticking with the big growth leaders here. Uh, 11 trillion in negative, negative yielding debt around yes. the world. This reflects a lot of that, right? Um, it, that's the backdrop. Yeah, I mean, negative yielding debt, which is of course down from what it was sure, uh, a 17, few months ago, yeah. um, and obviously central bank response. And I think the markets have performed so well, especially we're just looking at this one-year window, because you got this very powerful central bank easing response without a lot of associated cost. What really was the cost? You had a kind of a recession scare, and you got a little bit below trend in U.S. growth, and even global growth, you didn't have an all-out recession in most parts of the world. So do we think 2020, uh, the banks get less accommodative on a trajectory? Yes, uh, and that's, if we're talking about year yes, over year. Right, but yeah. that's also countered with USMCA, phase one. These 232 tariffs yeah. are not going to happen. Brazil steel tariffs not going to happen, right? Yeah, and I think that trade or that psychology is all those things insulate us from a recession. So the farther out you can push recession uh, in terms of the perception of when it comes, I think markets can uh, kind of make progress in that context. Because that, to me, is, the, is really the, uh, the, the premise of everything, is recession or no. If, you know, if no, then you look at your path to positive returns. You don't look at whether they're going to be positive. Any election year uh, kind of statistics that we should be aware of? You know, of it's interesting. It. Everyone seems to say, well, things are going to be really volatile and choppy because we have the election coming up. And that's very plausible. But if you look at it past election years, they tend to outperform. They tend to kind of flatten out in the middle of the, the year because, you know, they're, they're kind of waiting for the resolution. It's not necessarily... Uh, gyrating to every headline. It's more about let's reprice to a certain level where we think we're probably going to end up uh, in terms of the election and then wait and see if it happens.